Hi there, welcome back to a video series on exponential functions. This video lesson is going to deal with exponential growth and decay. So at this point, we've talked about exponential functions in general, just a little introduction. If you aren't sure what an exponential function is, take a peek at the uh, video tutorial I posted on introduction to exponential functions, uh, and then pop back in uh, for some uh, discussion about exponential growth and decay. Okay, so exponential growth, we talked about this a little bit, is a relationship where there's an increase uh, by a factor. So some factor, uh, in, this, in this example, we've got a uh, type of bacteria that triples in number every day. So we're tripling by, so we're increasing by a factor of three every day. So on the day that you happen to start looking at these bacteria, your sample has a population of 100. So I'm gonna let P represent your population, D represent the number of days. So at day zero, the first, uh, before, like as soon as you start looking at these bacteria, you see that there's a hundred of them. Uh, so what your, your goal is to determine the population uh, each day for the first four days. So I've done that in a table of values here. So essentially that's what I have is a relationship between the number of days and the population of the bacteria. So you can see as, as each day increases, I'm increasing my population by a factor of three. So I'm multiplying my population by three every day. Okay, so one way we can represent that is, is this table of values here with the actual population, but I can also represent that in a different way by taking my initial population and multiplying by three to the power of my, my number of days. Okay, so I'm gonna do that in this chart here and you're gonna see why in, in a moment. So you can see that my, my, for my first observation is I've got 100 bacteria and I'm gonna multiply by my tripling factor to the power of zero for day zero. Okay, and I'm gonna carry on in, in that way. So I'm gonna multiply by my tripling factor to the power of one for the first day because I've taken my initial population and, and I'm, I'm now multiplying by a factor of three. They've tripled in numbers. On the second day, I've tripled in number from what I had previously. So I've taken three times 100 and I've multiplied by three. So I've got this, uh, this square here. And you can see that I'm gonna carry on in that pattern as my days progress. So this table is, is really equivalent to this first table here. But the reason that I'm writing it this way is so that I can come up with a general equation for this scenario. Okay, we know that we have this initial population of 100. Um, we, our equation is going to be representing population. So we can say our population is, is going to be 100. We start with 100, but we're going to multiply by our tripling factor to the power of the number of days that we're interested in. So this equation here, this is a function. I can substitute in a number of days and it will tell me my population of my bacteria. As it turns out, that's very useful because I could graph my, my exponential function. Okay, so I could come up with this table of values and plot my points. I've done that ahead of time just for the sake of time, uh, but it's a good idea just to get used to graphing these sorts of functions because what we're gonna do next is start transforming them in a similar way to the way that we transform the basic functions in the previous unit that I did on, on my, uh, my YouTube channel here. Uh, and, and being able to represent this thing as a function is kind of nice because we can actually start predicting how much bacteria we'll have after a certain amount of time. So what I've done is uh, I've got two quick examples here. I'm not going to spend too much time on these. But if I have this general function and I want to predict how much bacteria I'm going to have after one week, I can just substitute in seven. There's seven days in a week. And I can determine that there are 218,700 bacteria in this culture after one week. So you can imagine I'm, I'm starting with 100 and I'm multiplying by three consecutively for seven days. I'm going to end up with quite a bit of bacteria. And after two weeks, you can see I end up with even more. Okay, so that's just an example of something we call exponential growth, which is when we multiply by a factor. Okay, it makes sense here to talk about exponential decay. This is a relationship where you decrease by a factor. A great example is half-life, which is the length of time it takes for something to decay to one half of its original amount. You see this with radioactive material and radioactive waste. So for example, uranium is commonly used as a fuel to power nuclear reactors. So we've got this 100 gram sample, it's got a half life of one hour. So after one hour, you're gonna have half of your original sample. And our goal is to find the mass after the first four hours. So this is a very similar example to the previous one, except this time we're working with exponential decay. Okay, so at, at time zero, I've started with 100 grams. One hour has passed, you can see I've decreased my sample by a factor of two. 
uh, and again after two uh, two hours I've decreased by another factor of two and so on and so on and I can represent this in in the same way that I did in the first example I can take my initial sample and I'm gonna I'm gonna write it as a product of my factor to the power of the number of days right so if I if my, my first initial observation uh, has a hundred I'm gonna multi I'm gonna multiply by one half to the power of zero and that should give me a hundred after one day I've decayed by a factor of two, so I'm raising that to the power of one. Two days, I'm decaying by a factor of two from my initial decay, so I've got a power of two, and so on and so on. And again, this allows me to, to generate a general equation, which allows me to predict the mass uh, after a, uh, a certain number of hours. Okay, sorry, I just noticed an error in my let statement here. M is gonna represent the, the mass, sorry about that. So that'll be my general equation. Again, this is a function. I can substitute in the number of hours and I can predict what the mass will be. This is great because again, I can graph this thing, get a visual representation of what, what's happening. You can see as time progresses, my mass decreases. Sorry, I don't have axis labels here, but you can see that there is that general decrease by a factor of two. Uh, this helps me predict how much uranium I'll have left after a certain number of hours. If I want to find out how much I've got left after 12 hours, I can simply substitute 12 in for H, do a little calculation there, and you'll see that I'm, I've got 0 0.0244 grams left. So you can see that this thing is decreasing pretty significantly after, after 12 hours where we've almost got uh, 0 grams left. Uh, however, you'll see that it's not actually possible to get 0 grams left. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that in uh, in some later videos that I'll post on uh, when we start transforming exponential functions. Okay, so that brings me to the end of this one. It was just a quick one on exponential growth and decay. This is sort of just an application of the, the video lesson that I did previously on an introduction to exponential functions. Uh, so stay tuned as we uh, move forward and continue looking at exponential functions. As usual, thanks for watching.